In this video, let's take a look at how to make an Arduino CNC drawing machine. Here's a quick preview of the CNC drawing machine in action. Now let's take a look at the parts you'll need. First, you'll need the 3D printed parts for this project, which I printed in PETG because I found that PLA was too brittle. I'll leave a link in the description to all the STL files. Then, you'll need two NEMA 17 stepper motors for our primary axes. Then, you'll need a simple 12 volt power supply. Then, you'll need a pigtail cable wire to attach to the power supply. Then, you'll need four metal round shaft rod bars with a diameter of 3mm and a length of 300mm. Then, you'll need two more bars with a diameter of 2.7mm and a length of 100mm. Then, you'll need an Arduino Uno and a CNC shield along with two A4988 stepper motor drivers and an Arduino data cable. Then, you'll need a servo motor and three female to male wires to extend the servo motor cables. Then, you'll need two Borbell pulley wheels and two idler pulleys with a diameter of 5mm. Then, you'll need four zip ties and a roll of timing belt, and the timing belt will be cut to the required length while we assemble the machine. Then, you'll need bolts, nuts, and spacers of variable sizes and numbers. The primary size of bolt used is the M4 variant. Then, you'll need some thin cardboard cut to the size of a drawing base and four paper clamps. Then, you'll need a 1 foot by 1 foot acrylic clear sheet with holes drilled in according to the sizes and holes on the 3D printed parts. You can look at the final product made in this video to decide how to drill your holes. And I'll also leave a link in the description to my 3D printed Dremel video, which I used to drill the holes in my acrylic sheet myself. Finally, you'll need a writing utensil. I used an ultra fine point sharpie in my machine. Now let's take a look at how to assemble the machine. Let's start off with the x-axis. First, attach a 3D printed pulley to the adjustable slot in the x-axis belt holder and make sure that the pulley can slide freely in that slot. Then, tightly attach the bed to the x-axis belt holder. Then, attach one of the stepper motors to the x-axis motor holder with the wire pins facing in the same direction as the shaft rod holders. Then, attach a bore belt pulley wheel to that motor shaft. Then, attach one of the idler pulleys to the x-axis pulley holder. Then, pass two shaft rods through the x-axis bed holder and connect them to the x-axis motor and pulley holders and ensure that the bed can slide freely. Then, Cut out a section of the timing belt and secure loops on the ends using zip ties so that it fits tightly around both pulleys and the x-axis bed holder. Now you should be able to move the bed by rotating the pulleys. Next, attach the x-axis belt holder with the pulley underneath the bed. You can adjust that pulley to make the belt tighter or looser. Next, attach the entire x-axis to the acrylic sheet, making sure that you have spacers underneath both of the motor and pulley holders to ensure that the motor does not touch the acrylic sheet. When attaching the x-axis, make sure that the motor is on the same side that you're going to attach the Arduino and CNC shield. Now let's look at mounting the Arduino and CNC shield to the acrylic sheet. First, connect the CNC shield to the Arduino Uno, making sure that the data cable port on the Uno is on the same side as the power input for the CNC shield. Then, attach spacers to the bottom of the Uno and screw it into the acrylic sheet. This ensures that the Arduino does not touch the sheet. Now, let's assemble the Y-axis. 
First, attach a 3D printed pulley to the middle slot in the Y-axis block and make sure that the pulley can slide freely. Then, attach two bolts to the slots on either side of the pulley, but make sure that they're attached tightly so that they don't slide in that slot. Then, screw in a bolt on the Z-axis pen holder block in the hole that is above the other two holes. Then, making sure that the bolt on the pen holder block is facing the inside of the Y-axis block, pass in the short shaft rods to connect the pen holder block to the Y-axis block. Then, secure the short shaft rods on both sides of the Y-axis block with some electrical tape. And then make sure that the pen holder block can still slide freely on the rods. Then, attach the Y-axis motor holder to the acrylic sheet on the same side as the Arduino and CNC shield. Make sure to use the 3D printed rectangular spacers when attaching the Y-axis. Then, attach the Y-axis pulley holder on the other side of the sheet. Then, attach a stepper motor to the Y-axis motor holder, making sure that the wire pins are facing the Arduino and CNC shield. Then, attach an idler pulley to the Y-axis pulley holder, making sure that it's not too tight and that the pulley can still rotate. Then, using the long shaft rods, attach the Y-axis block to the Y-axis pulley and motor holders. Then, secure the ends of the rods on the inside of the machine using electrical tape to ensure that the rods don't slide. Finally, test that the Y-axis block can still slide freely. Then, attach a pulley wheel to the Y-axis stepper motor. Then, as with the X-axis, cut out a strip of the timing belt and loop it around both pulleys and connect it to the Y-axis block. Make sure to secure the timing belt loops with nuts. Then, test that rotating the pulleys is able to move the Y-axis block. Then, place the servo motor on the rectangular platform on the Y-axis block and make sure that the flap is underneath the bolt on the pen holder block. Then, secure the servo motor using the U-shaped attachment. Now, let's get onto the wiring. Connect the motors to the CNC shield, making sure that the red wires on the left on both the motor and the shield. Make sure to connect the X and Y motors to the correct slots on the shield. Connect the motors drivers next to the motor connections, making sure they're in the same orientation as the shield. Connect the female male wires to the servo motor wires. I use the same colors to ensure there's no confusion. Then connect the servo motor wires to the CNC shield. I'll have a close up picture in a few seconds. Then connect the ends of the pigtail wire to the power supply and the CNC shield, making sure that the positive and negatives are properly connected. Then keeping the power supply unplugged, connect it to the pigtail wire. Then connect one end of the data cable to the Arduino Uno. In this image, note that the red wires on the left for the stepper motor connections. Also know that the orange wire from the servo connects to the Z+, the brown wire from the servo connects to the G and C, and the red wire from the servo connects to the 5V power supply. Now let's look at the software setup for the machine. First, download the Arduino ID. I'll leave a link in the description. Then, download GRBL servo. I'll leave a link in the description. Then, open the Arduino IDE, go to Sketch, Include Library, and Add Zip Library. Extract GRBL Servo from the zip and select the folder, and add it as a library. Then, go to Tools, Include Library, and include the GRBL Servo library. And then after doing so, scroll to make sure that all the imports are visible. Then, open the GRBL Servo, go to Examples, GRBL Upload, and then open GRBL Upload.ino. 
Then connect the power supply first and then connect the Arduino data cable to your computer. Make sure the motors have been wired otherwise you might fry your CNC shield. Back in the Arduino IDE, go to Tools and then Port to verify that the USB port indicates an Arduino Uno that is connected. Back in the GRBL upload file, click the tick mark to compile the file and then click the arrow mark to upload it to the Arduino. Any warnings you see in the console window can be ignored in the Arduino IDE. Next, download the Universal G Code Sender. I'll leave a link in the description. Then, go to Settings, Macro Settings in the G Code Sender and add two macros for the Z down and Z up. The commands M03, S30, and M05 indicate up and down for the servo motor. Then, making sure that the port is the same as the one you saw on the Arduino IDE, click Open to open a connection. Then, you can use the individual plus and minus buttons for the X and Y axes to test that the motors are working. The Z axis buttons won't work because we're using a servo motor instead of a stepper motor. To test the Z axis, you can flip to the macros tab, and then check the Z down and Z up macros that we created. This should move the servo motor up and down. Now let's calibrate the machine. First, enter two dollar signs in the console to view the settings. Note the steps per mm values for the X and Y axes indicated by dollar sign 100 and 101. Also note the XY step size in the top right. This is the number of millimeters the motor should move on one button press. You can use a ruler to verify the step size by pressing the buttons and seeing that the distance traveled is the same as the step size. If the distance traveled is not equal to the step size, take the ratio of the step size to millimeters moved. Then multiply the steps per mm value of that axis by this ratio. In the x-axis, for example, if the step size is 5 and the milliliters moved is 10, the ratio of step size to mm moved is 5 over 10, which is 1 half. If the steps per mm for the axis was 200, multiply that by 1 half to get a calibrated value of 100. To change the steps per mm value for the x-axis or y-axis, use dollar sign 100 or 101 equals whatever value you want it to be. Make sure to verify the step size again until the step size is exactly equal to the mm mode. Now, let's look at how to use the machine to draw using Inkscape for G-Code. First, download Inkscape. I'll leave a link in the description. In Inkscape, go to File, Document Properties, and set a custom size appropriate for your machine. I'll start with 50mm by 50mm for my example. And then you can draw a shape of your choice. I drew a square in Inkscape. Select the shape, go to Path, and then click Object to Path to convert the shape to a path. Then go to Extensions, G Code Tools, Tools Library, and select a cone tool for this drawing. In the cone settings, change the diameter to a value close to the pen's tip. I use a diameter of 3mm for my pen. The feed setting is the drawing speed. Values between 400 and 1000 usually work best. Next, go to Extensions, G Code Tools, Orientation Points, and add an in out reference point to the drawing. Next, deselect the shape, go to Extensions, G Code Tools, Path to G Code, and create a G Code. Make sure to change the name of the file and make sure that the rounding to 4 digits is set, and you can change the file location as well before clicking Apply. Then, you can examine the G-Code file in any text editor of your choice. Since we're using a servo motor instead of a stepper motor for the Z-axis, we need to modify the G-Code. From our macros, we know that Z-plus is M5 and Z-minus is M03S30. Since we want the pen to start in an upward position, change the first M3 to an M5. Wherever we see a line of code where it says penetrate, that's where you want the motor to move down. So you can use the find and replace tool, paste that, and then replace it with M03S30 as we saw before with our macros to penetrate. Next, attach a sheet of paper to the cardboard onto the base using the four paper clamps. Next, attach your writing utensil to the Z-axis pen holder block using the pen attachment. Make sure the servo motor is in the upward position and that the pen's tip is just above the paper. Next, go back to the G Code Sender, click Browse, and select the G Code file we generated from Inkscape. 
Then you can click send and the drawing will begin. Once the drawing is completed, the pen will return back to its starting position. You also get live updates of the pen's current position and how many lines of code have been sent. You can also cancel the drawing if the drawing is not progressing properly. You'll get a success notification when the drawing is complete. You can also try other shapes to test the machine. In this example, I drew a circle with diameter of 4 cm. As a bonus from the preview, let's look at how to convert images to G-code for drawing. In Inkscape, go to File, Import, select the image, and then resize it to fit in your document. With the image selected, go to Path, Trace Bitmap, select Edge Detection, and then click Update. This will give you a vector outline of the image. Then you can remove the original image to be left with the outline. Now we follow the exact same steps as we did before to create a tool for the drawing, add the in out reference point, and then creating the G code file. Again, we can examine and then make the same modifications to this G-code file as well to use the servo motor. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can build your own version of this project and make some cool drawings yourself.